Hello everyone, Rabbi Abe here. I'm going to explain a concept from the Zohar today that a lot of people have questions about. You know, you look around, good people suffer, bad people, many, are not suffering the opposite. They are prospering. And you wonder why. I mean, many people say there's no justice in the world, even your believe in God or you know, whatever it is that you believe in, it's a difficult uh, nut to swallow when you see people around you who are less than, <laughs> you know, positive people, but actually they're without worry. Uh, I mean, they have money, they have whatever it is they need, and it's very confusing. So I'm reading from the Zohar now, the original text. It says, Something very, very strange and profound. There are evil people that they actually have coming to them as though they're righteous. They have the reward of righteous people in this world. The eat lon utra ushlam ba'arichun de yomin alma. So he says, Yeshlam, they have Oche, they have uh, wealth, shalom, they have peace, peace of mind. And they have even long life in this world. Amrulo. So they, he asked the question, But if they're evil people, the Zohar asks, the why do they, why are they entitled to this? I mean, we're asking the same question, right? Why are they entitled to all this good if they are evil? If some people are really evil, then they might be, you know, all around us and, you know, wherever they appear. And they don't seem to be having any miserable time. Atova hazo. The answer, the answer that the Zohar is giving us, this good that they are enjoying, he have a ut ruah. It is, how do you say that in English? It's 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 almost considered nonsense, a nonsense, or uh, like you know, like a breath. It's like a. It, in other words, it's fleeting. It's fleeting, meaning in this lifetime. Because their incarnation, their present incarnation has dictated that they will be evil people, negative people, based on something in their past. And it's a profound idea. It says the Creator brought them into this world, into this incarnation, only to pay them back for some good that they created in previous incarnation. And they are now receiving their reward, and that's it. In other words, that's all they get. Uh, a certain reward that is due to them because of their past, something good. I mean, you know, mo most people, even negative people, they're not all bad. They do do some good. And it says that the Creator remembers every single detail of every action, every thought, everything. So, I mean, we're very limited with our capacity to be able to look at other people and judge. We look at the surface, we're, you know, we're not able to see. We don't. Certainly, uh, we don't judge accurately, but then it says many other things, and it's very, very difficult for us to understand how the spiritual process works. I mean, it's, it's for that reason that the, the wisdom and the knowledge of the Kabbalah has come out in our generations to help us make sense out of the world, out of the environment that we live in. Very difficult. I mean, the reason why, you know, th this week I start this uh, very important deep study group coaching to help us improve, you know, to help us improve our life truly, because it's hard to make heads or tails, especially now when there's so much 
chaos, confusion in the world. Why is it happening? How can we go out of it? How can we still, you know, become uh, vessels for the spiritual light, for receiving, for ben beneficence, for fulfillment? Because the rule is the spiritual light of the creator is endless and it is here for us. But, you know, if we are not in touch with that, as much as the creator wants to give us, we, not be, we may not be available. We might think we're available, but, you know, very much like, I don't know if we've ever experienced a closed-minded person. Now, a closed-minded person might not think that they're closed-minded, if you follow what I'm saying. They may think, oh, yeah, I'm open. But if you talk to them, nothing goes, it doesn't matter what you say almost, nothing goes inside. Why? Because they don't have a place. And it's not a physical place, obviously, we're, we're talking about. It's not about a physical place. It's about an energetic place. We call that a vessel. All receiving in life depends on our ability and our capacity to receive it. So while we think we might have a desire, we don't necessarily have a desire. Because the creator light is available 24-7. That's the rule. But if we do not understand the creative process, which is what I hope to explain in these 10 weeks, then, you know, it doesn't matter how much light, it doesn't matter how much beneficence, it doesn't matter how much sustenance, it doesn't matter how much help is there. If we don't have the vessel or the capacity to receive it, and you know what the clue is, if we're not receiving it, automatically it means we don't have a vessel. We may not know why. We may think we do. But the rule is, you know, one of the rules in the creative process I will share with you, and it is, it sounds simple, but it is profound. There is no coercion in spirituality. No coercion. But what does that mean? The creator can never give us something, anything that we do not truly want. It just simply can't happen. And while we might think on a superficial level that we desire, yeah, I desire this, I desire that, I desire this. Does that mean we really do? You know, sometimes our desires come from our illusion of ourself or what we think. You know, we, we have many illusions about ourselves. We don't always exist in reality. You know, what's the difference between the reality of me, the real me, and the illusion of me? It can be very, very different. If I'm busy thinking, let's say, you know, what they think about me and other people's opinions about me, and uh, if I'm, you know, if I'm good enough, if I'm enough, you know, and we're, we're busy with all those thoughts, right? Uh, so we're busy with the illusion of us. We're not busy with the real us. The first rule in receiving is, number one, we have to, we have to be in touch with the real us. That's number one. Number two, we have to ve we have to have the vessel of of receiving, which means true desire. And if we're not receiving whatever it is that we think we want to receive, we do not have a true desire, as much as we might think that we do. We do not. How do we know when we really have a true desire for something? Well, we have it. That's how we know when it is accomplished, when it is done. When it becomes manifest, before that, I mean, I might be on my way, but I have not yet reached the level of true desire. You know, true desire is a little bit like going to the gym, let's say. I want to go. I want to get strong. I, I, yeah, everything good. All good. Yeah, I have such a desire. But you know what? In the end of the day, I'm not at the gym. So do I really want? But what does it mean to really want? I'm at the gym, and I'm doing what it takes, according to what I personally desire, to achieve my goal. Whatever is necessary. I say, I want to be a spiritual person. A lot of people tell me, I want this, I want that. And I say, you got to learn the creative process. 
okay, but I'm busy Monday nights. <laughs> you know, as an example. So do I really have a desire? Probably not. Because I'm not willing to do what's necessary, whatever that might be. I'm not necessarily willing to do what it takes at work to achieve my next level at work, my next level at health, my next level at eating properly. We're not ready until we're ready to do according to the goal we say we want to achieve. And the goal is also very necessary. We call that the light of wisdom. If we don't have that, you know, it's almost like putting in the GPS, I would like to go somewhere. <laughs> and you know what? You're going to be driving for a very long time because somewhere is going to lead you everywhere, but not to a specific goal. And that is necessary in life. We must have goals. We must have a target in life. We must have a focus and a desire. It can change. That's okay. But we must have it. As the Kabbalists explain, if there's no light of wisdom, we'll be busy driving around. We'll be like the hamster in the wheel. You know, maybe you can relate. Doing a lot of pedaling. You're working really hard, but you're not going anywhere. Why? Because if we don't have that thing called light of wisdom, we're not going anywhere. And we could be working night and day. It doesn't matter. You see, the creative force needs us to tell us what it is that we want. And then we need to be willing to do the work, physical and spiritual work. It's always two parts, whatever is necessary to achieve it. And in that way, the endless force of the creator will come in in an endless way. But we have to know how to get there. And that is, a pro that is called the creative process. So if you, if you know, there's a couple of spots left in my course. If And if you're listening to this after the fact, I think it'll be up online. I hope so. Anyway, for those who are not, uh, you know, we're not able to uh, attend or join or one way or the other live or, you know, otherwise. But this is so important because without it, we don't have a target in life. We don't understand the process in life. And the creative process is the same. Whether it's a, a universe, a creation of a universe, where you're creating breakfast, or you want to create a, a job for yourself, or a work, a child, doesn't matter. The creative process, or what we call the tree of life, the ten sifirot, are the same at whatever level. The same, the same, the same. So we don't need to learn a million things. but. We need to learn one thing and learn it really well. And when we have that, we have the secret of how to work with life, understand life, peace of mind in life, more prosperous life, maybe healthier life, successful life, and whatever it is we're trying to do, because the light wants to give more than we want to receive. All we really need to do is to learn how to receive the Creator's light. Be blessed, guys, and I'll see you soon on the next video. All the best.